as I've pretty much been silent for, mm, I don't know, at least about a week or so, I've been just observing and, you know, kind of catching up on things, um, definitely working, working on my body, working on, you know, being more fit, more active. The other thing that I've noticed is, you know, one is a few things that's going on in the universe as far as when it comes to retrogrades. They're saying that it's like a whole bunch of retrogrades at one time. Like, I mean, like more than one. Um, That can explain maybe some things, but I'm not going to go into deep into that. But um, one thing that I've noticed is uh, I've been kind of catching up on sleep and, um, you know, thinking about old, you know, dreams I've had, old nightmares, old, uh, you know, um, situations where I just kind of pushed aside and I just, you know, erase them from my memory banks, but um, I didn't necessarily dump them out. And a lot of thoughts are coming back up as far as things with um, just how I look as far as the whole world, not not a, not even the whole world, but just in the U.S. and in in a black culture, as well as, um, you know, other cultures as well. Um, One of the things I'm reminded of is um, with the whole, let's just say, diesel culture. Um, One of the reasons why we have such a kind of um, lower tier economic mindset as well as diesel type culture is because basically the brain has been hijacked. It's been it's been it's been a lock put on it. Right? It's it's like um the lock that you see at a gym when you you basically um you left your lock on, you know, you didn't pay for the twenty uh, four hour locked access. <laughs> it's like People that go to the club, they know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's like that is a lot of people's brains, right? It's an old artist uh, rendition that uh, it it pretty much paints a picture of a strong man with a bald head, and he has a lock on his brain. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he's holding the key or actually um, has the key somewhere else or whatever. But that lock is in a lot of people's brains, okay? And in a black community, that lock is like synonymous with just lower tier thinking, lower tier conversations, lower tier mindsets, lower tiered activities and behaviors. And um, it, it's basically based off of you're not thinking you're good enough for higher tier things. Um, I, I never forget that, uh, you know, I hopped on someone's panel and they were basically like, I was speaking of, you know, community slash, you know, building up wealth, you know, basically the the cornerstone of of whatever I talked about, you know, my channel, as well as health. And it's like, you're an elitist. What are you talking about? You're an elitist. Like, see, that is the stuff that, um, you know, I I pretty much... um, I see a lot of and 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 that and that's not necessarily what I'm talking about as far as the lock because 
let's just face it. Some people, a lot of people, I would even say, they don't want the they don't want black people to do well. They love because they they've then engaged in a lot of the quote unquote fuckery and the uh, vitriol that is the worst of the worst of the you know black community or whatever. They they've engaged in those activities and they actually um, kind of like a dark Sith in a Star Wars. They actually loathe that darkness and dr- daily drama and negativity and you know so on and so forth so much that they don't actually want it's actually black people that they don't want the black community to you know in the, in the uh, words of chris rock they don't want they don't want every black person to have a, a a yacht in a swimming pool in the backyard you know they actually want it to be even probably worse because you know whatever uh, underworld activities, and I'm going to get to that, um, they have uh, engaged in or are engaging in now behind a ghost avatar on YouTube, um, they actually don't want to actually have any positivity or any type of higher tier wealth or higher tier anything positive. And, and I hear that and I, you know, immediately come to the conclusion that that might be you know somewhat more of the case than not and and it goes into you know basically when you have a lot of the drudgery that you know i've seen through you know news stories as far as you know um the warnings i gave a year ago a year and a half ago you know basically save your coin you know save your uh self you know basically which means basically if you don't have money in this capitalistic system uh you don't you it is very difficult for you to save yourself of anything um if if nothing else if i don't know anything else in life it's two things you need to have health and you need to have some type of wealth if I don't freaking know nothing, if I'm retarded, I know those two things. And those two things primarily are the cornerstone of basic, you know, economic survival, you want to just say. Okay. Now, I know I'm a lot, you know, I'm I'm a, 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 a little bit too deep for most people that um, probably listen to me or uh even other people um that um talk about other things and stuff like that i get it you know but the thing is is that when it comes to the things that i you know remembered from years and years ago of struggle and and you know you know ups and downs in life one of the things that i'm reminded of is that you know, when you have a high unemployment rate or a consistent long-term unemployment rate, a consistent long-term this negative st- uh, statistic, that negative statistic, this negative statistic, basically that leads into what? How are you going to make a living? The underworld, okay? And I'm not talking about vampires and were- werewolves and shit like that. I mean, I'm talking about fucking crime, organized and unorganized crime. You know, if you have uh, so many people unemployed, okay, long-term unemployment, because I can, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, parts of Chicago and, you know, outside of Chicago where um, basically they're... uh, the sketchy neighborhoods and the neighborhoods that are not so sketchy in the quote unquote, you know, more better neighborhoods, right? Well, the thing about a lot of the really, really hardcore hood areas, a lot of that um, is based off of being involved in unorganized crime or even organized crime. 
That's the hard truth. Uh, I bought a house in a highly uh, uh, hood area in Chicago. And uh, it was a lot of darkness over there. I mean, so much darkness that um, I don't even know what I was thinking when I bought it. Like, um, I literally, I mean, yeah, I paid pennies on a dollar for it, literally. Okay, but um, it was a reason why, you know, that website sold that house. You know, it was a reason why the Kano Homes sold that house to me for a dollar. Okay, but the fees were like in the equivalent of almost a thousand dollars. It was the reason why they sold this house to me. Okay, and and it was so bottom dollar, right? You know, and that reason was based off of being an F grade neighborhood, an F grade house. Okay, and it's like, um, you know, I'm pretty much um. I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot from that experience. I've learned a lot from uh, just basically real estate itself, the whole word, location, location, location. Um, that's kind of like the the uh, term as far as what brokers say as far as diversify your portfolio. People hear that and then they just throw it out the window, but yeah. It, it's it's literally that, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's no uh, result, but basically based off of economic, you know, exclusion, economic uh, survival and, and all kind of stuff, people, they have to go to uh, the, the level of let's just say system D. Let's just say system D to just keep it general. Because the thing about system D is system D is not necessarily all criminal activity. It's just maybe you don't have a license to sell something. Okay? Like, you know, you don't necessarily have a license to sell plates of food, but you still cater. And then nobody really is not going to say anything unless, like, I don't know, something happens where, let's just say somebody gets really, really sick or multiple people get sick, then, yeah, I mean, it might be an issue. But nevertheless, yeah, a lot of the black community, they do have to engage in a lot of system D activities because, basically, ain't everybody hiring them not everybody is able to be hired. Uh, it's no business is hardly being open. Black people don't support black businesses. So it's nothing left else a lot of times but the D, literally. Okay, so, I mean, basically, I'm just saying all of this to say um, th those are some of the thoughts that I've had um, based off of just kind of getting through the week. Um, I will most likely not post as much on my channel as I normally do. Uh, you know, and another another warning I have for, you know, a lot of people is that you got to watch who you're uh, listening to. You got to watch, you got to kind of psychoanalyze the content creator you know, um, to a certain degree, because let's just say a couple things. If a content creator does not necessarily show their face or whatever they look like or whatever, fine. But if they do one thing as far as, like, they don't expose their personal life <laughs> and, and, and also they talk about other people that did expose their personal life, that's kind of an oxymoron um, because basically you're not even being uh, 100% um, accurate as far as what you're portraying, your true life. You're behind and behind a mask 
but you're talking about all kind of other people that are not i mean you're basically a ghost so it's like the whole ghost thing and even people that are not so much ghosts they don't expose their true lives but then have all the smoke for other people that do expose their true lives it's kind of funny to me how people do that but you know the thing about me is words don't really bother me like a lot of other people i see on youtube um i've been in a war i've been in the military um i've been in the hood and been in wars with gang factions and seen shootouts and all of that type of stuff um i you know that words don't really bother me that much okay i really i've had drill sergeants yell some of the most hardcore freaking you know things you ever heard and um i say drill sergeant to say basically so most people can understand because if i say rdc people won't even understand what that is but um the thing is is that i can take uh people saying stuff and stuff like that it doesn't really bother me but you got to really understand you know it's people that they really need you to they want to you know kind of control whatever you know talking point they actually put